Do you like the idea of destroying your enemies with the power of a star? What about crushing your foes with the same kind of gravity found that of a black hole? If so, Solarian is the class for you, and I'm going to talk about it today. Welcome to the Maple Table, my name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games like Starfinder or Werewolf the Apocalypse. If that's something you're into, I would love to have you hit the subscribe button and that bell notification just so that you know when my content comes available. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the most complicated classes in Starfinder, the Solarian. Maybe Starfinder is a new system for you, but you are familiar with role-playing games, then this one might be okay for you. But if you're brand new to role-playing games at all, I might suggest not starting with the Solarian as your first class. With that general warning out of the way, because of how complicated this is, let's get into it. So what is a Solarian? As I mentioned in the opening, Solarians harness the energy of stars and the gravity of black holes and turn this energy into defense or weapons that they can use. A Solarian is a tank or a frontline fighter type of class. As you can see by their 7 plus constitution modifier stamina points and 7 hit points for the class, you can really see that the Solarian is no joke. These stats actually put it on par with the soldier. Your key ability score as a Solarian is going to be Charisma. And although you get a solid bunch of class skills to use, you will only get a small amount of skill points to put in those skills. Four plus your intelligence modifier. And you'll get to start off with just a few proficiencies, which you'll find up here. One thematic feature that I really like about the Solarian is the fist size mote of energy that follows a Solarian around. This does make a Solarian somewhat easy to identify on the battlefield, but it's this mote of energy that they harness to form either their armor or their weapon. I should mention that this little ball of light can actually come in any color that the player chooses as long as it's the color that a star would be in space. So you'd be looking at blue, red, yellow, white. You can even go black, like the center of a black hole. No matter the color that you choose, your little ball of energy will cast off a dim amount of light for a 20 foot radius. And this can be turned on or off at the will of the player, just in case you wanted to be a little bit more sneaky. So who should play a Solarian? I'm gonna list just a couple of races that I think would be good for ideas if you're looking for some concepts. But if you already have a player concept in mind, then just go with that. Humans from the core rulebook, page 44, might be a good choice for a more defensive Solarian. Kasathis make a good choice from the core rulebook, page 46, if you're looking for a more melee type Solarian. If you have access to Alien Archives 1 and 2, the next two options for you are going to be a little bit more out uh, a little bit more out there but could be a lot of fun. For example, Uplifted Bear from Alien Archives 2, page 17, would be a interesting choice for a Solarian. Or the Skittermander from the Alien Archives 1, page 106. These little buggers would have a specialty in grapple. As to why the Skittermander would be good for grappling, check out the video I did up here about the Skittermander. As to a theme, I would suggest something that complements your race. Bounty Hunter, Icon, Starwalker might be good choices to round out your abilities. If you're looking for a more punchy build for your Solarian, Charisma is going to be your main. Strength and Constitution might be some good choices for your second and third, although not necessarily in those orders. And I would look at Charisma, Dexterity, and Constitution for more tanky builds. So how should you play your Solarian? Any way you want. I'm just kidding, that was a really bad joke. But seriously, you do actually have to make a very important choice for your Solarian at first level. And once you've picked it, you cannot change it. The choice you have to make is do you want your moat to be armor or weapon style? Another neat thematic feature of the Solarian is no matter what you choose for weapon or armor, you as the player get to decide what your armor looks like or what your weapon looks like. 
keep in mind that this is only just an aesthetic. So no matter what you choose, you actually don't get any bonuses. For example, if you were to use a spear, you suddenly don't get the reach option. Your weapon functions as if it was an advanced melee weapon for the terms of game mechanics. And your armor gives you plus one EAC and plus one KAC, which only stacks with light armor. So if you are wearing heavy armor, you do not get those bonuses from your moat armor. And as I mentioned, this choice of weapon or armor can only be made once when you take your first level of Solarian. So please choose wisely. Now, here's where things get complicated. As a Solarian, you have three modes that you can be in. Graviton, Photon, or Unattuned. And these only matter when you are in combat. All of your Solarian abilities are going to be called Stellar Revelations. Insert Bill and Ted joke here. And all of the Stellar Revelations will fall into one of three categories. They will be Photon Revelations, Graviton Revelations, or Zenith Abilities. And I will talk about these Zenith Abilities in just a moment. At the start of your first turn in combat, not before, you will receive one point of either Photon Revelation or Graviton Revelation. This choice is up to you as the player. And at the start of your next turn, you will gain another point in either one of those. Once you have one point in either mode, you are considered attuned to that mode. What this will mean for you is that your stellar revelations will actually increase in power, whether you have a point of graviton or whether you have a point of photon. And once you have three points in one of those modes, you are considered fully attuned to that mode. And once you're attuned, you can now use your zenith ability, but only for the mode you're attuned with. This is kind of like your Super Saiyan charge up attack. However, once you've used this attack, you lose all points in the mode you have been accumulating in and you go back to an unattuned state. Also, you don't get to pick your first Zenith ability until level 9. Important note, once you put a point into a mode, stick with that same mode. Because, for example, if you take one point in Photon mode while you have been charging Graviton, the moment you take that Photon point, you will immediately lose all the points that you have accumulated in your Graviton mode. Now, as you progress your character, you will actually get to choose more Photon or Graviton abilities. You will gain two Stellar Revelations, one Photon, one Graviton ability at level 1. At level 2, you will get to select one more Photon or Graviton ability, and then every two levels after that, you will select one more. You can never select from a list that is higher than your current class level. And on top of this, you do need to keep a balance of the abilities you pick. You should never have more photon abilities than graviton abilities and vice versa by more than a difference of one. If you do, for example, have four graviton abilities and two photon abilities, it actually becomes much harder to attune because your balance is out of sync. To become fully attuned, you will now require four attunement points in either of the modes. And that's only if your photon abilities or your graviton abilities are different by more than a factor of one. I told you this was gonna be a little bit more complicated. Now as for a couple of really neat Solarian abilities, I really like Stellar Rush. Because basically, you light yourself on fire with the power of a sun, and then you charge your enemies dealing fire damage. Which is actually a really cool look when you think about it. Dark Matter is going to be pretty good for your damage resistance. The way I imagine this working thematically, is you are harnessing the gravity of a black hole and changing your body density so that it is so heavy that gravity around you changes. So bullets and fists, they slow down because your gravity around you is, is so dense and it's so hard to get through, you, you get damage resistance. And because I think flying is neat, defy gravity. However, when you use this ability, you do have to end your turn on ground that would support you normally. Or you fall, and you make a squishy sound when you hit the ground. 
Well, this has been an overview of the Solarian class. I hope this helps you decide whether or not this class is right for you. Because there was so much to cover, this video might have actually run a little bit longer than my uh, than my normal aim time for this. So just deal with it because there's a lot to cover. Thank you for sticking around this long if you did make it to the end of the video. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so that you know when my content is available. Please leave a like if you found this video helpful. And tell me below how you built your Solarian and how well that worked for you. I do plan to do some more videos around the classes, so stay tuned for those. The reason I did Solarian second was because one of my subscribers had asked for it, Edward Burns. So this one's for you, Ed. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.